Hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of DC Today. You had the fifth uh, market sell-off out of the last six days today. So certainly um, not a lot of momentum to be buying in the market. I'm going to talk about some of the reasons for that, um, the, the overall market environment we're in. Today in particular, markets were hit um, as the Biden administration, the Federal Trade Commission announced uh, uh, antitrust, a major antitrust lawsuit they're bringing against Amazon. And I have a link to that story in the dctoday.com. I think you combine a uh, rather surprising headline event like that with the underlying market jitters and you get more market downside, despite the fact that today bond yields actually didn't move. Generally, a good portion of market activity as of late has been correlated with the bond market. And, and today we saw bond yields flat and equities down quite a bit. Um, I'll get that out of the way first. Dow was the best performing index and it was down 388 points. That was 1.1% to the downside. The S&P was down 1.5%. The NASDAQ was down almost 1.6. Um, you, like I mentioned, the bond yields were flat. The 10 year was at 4.55%. The best performing sector today was energy, and it was down half of a percent. Uh, but the worst performing is utilities, and they were down a shocking 3%. So um, again, mostly red ink today. Oil, by the way, was up. May explain why energy did relatively well compared to markets. And oil was just up a little bit, but back up above $90 a barrel. Um, why is the dollar up so much if things are going so badly for American economy? Pretty simple. They're not going that bad for American economy relative to other countries. The growth of the U.S. economy is not great, but it is not recessionary. And it is better than uh, 4X counterparts. In the meantime, uh, the Fed is tight. And so you have attractive interest rates. Um, that makes people want to park in dollar-denominated assets, all the while growth, not having to give up much for growth. It's pretty simple. Um, never forget that currencies are relative things. And this is where I think dollar bears often get their faces ripped off as failing to understand the relative nature of the Forex world, foreign exchange currency world. Uh, and along those lines, because it really does connect to this, Today, notwithstanding, as bond yields were kind of boring and equity prices were not, but this has been a global bond yield story, not a U.S. yield story. Um, and I think that any attempt to understand what's happening right now in markets, apart from understanding the global yield nature of it, is going to be short. Uh, you will come up short with an understanding of what's happening right now as global bond yields have, have moved higher this last month. Um, I'm going to skip over it because I don't care. In a sentence, the FCC, which is the Federal Communications Commission, which should not be confused with the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission. And the prior story I mentioned regarding antitrust violations against Amazon come from the FTC. And now an attempt to restore net neutrality rules come from the FCC. And if you don't think we have enough alphabet soup of regulatory agencies, I can tell you the uh, uh, acronym for an awful lot more. But I think the way it was is that if we didn't have net neutrality, the world was going to end. Or no, no, what it was is at first net neutrality was killing us and then we had to get rid of net neutrality, but then getting rid of net neutrality was going to kill us. And then now you got to bring net neutrality back. And I can't remember what killed us or what didn't and what's supposed to be a problem. So, you know, hopefully the FCC will square all that out. Uh, yeah. um, you have Neil Kashkari, Fed governor in Minnesota, former gubernatorial candidate. Did you guys know that? A Fed governor in Minnesota once ran for governor here in California. You'll be shocked to know he lost and uh, then decided to go be a central banker. Uh, I know Neil. He is um, a piece of work. And he came out today to say, that uh, you know we probably need another rate hike. And meanwhile, the futures responded by increasing the odds that there would not be another rate hike. Um, I recommend you follow the Fed Funds Futures, not anyone who is running to a microphone from the Fed. Full year earnings estimates for the S&P 500 for 2024, full year estimates 
are right now at $248 a share in the S&P 500. Uh, we, are luck- we will be lucky to hit $222 in 2023. So maybe that 248 is a conservative estimate and you really are going to see over 10% earnings growth from this year to next year. Maybe it's too optimistic and you're going to start seeing revisions down. But I think what you will want to watch in the next six months, besides valuations, which are heavily connected to bond yields, is earnings estimates themselves. And uh, if revisions begin one way or the other, that'd be a good place to start for what to expect for next year. Uh, Single family homes declined 8.7% in August and the average price is down 3.2% versus a year ago. September's consumer confidence came in 103 and about 108.7 the prior month, although we thought it only been 106 and it got revised up. So it was down from what we thought it was. It was down even more from what it was revised up to. But present situation actually improved on the month, but it was future expectations down significantly. Uh, I've told you before what I think of the consumer confidence metric as a predictive indicator. Why are high yield bond spreads, uh, let's put it, let me reword it. Why are high yield bonds that are taxable not suffering as much as high yield bonds that are tax free? Um, the, you know, there are nuances in the sense that you could say, well, spreads have responded differently. There's more worries about government tax revenues in the high yield muni space than there is in the taxable, you know, the taxable side is immune from that. But really, it's mostly just about duration that your average high yield taxable uh, issue is somewhere around a four duration and you get closer to 10%, eight or 9% for the high yield munis. And so you're, you're gonna have worse price deterioration when rates go higher with high yield muni. And then of course, when rates go lower, you get higher price appreciation. That's the duration story applied to high yield taxable versus tax free. Very thoughtful question that came in there. Uh, a good link if you're at the dctoday.com to my appearance on Varney this morning. We talked about a number of different things. Um, and you may be interested in watching that link. And then tomorrow morning, clients will get their weekly portfolio report. I know they'll be interested in that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading the DC Today. We'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday, debate number two in the GOP primary. Mm-hmm.